Welcome to Perspectives, a podcast where the clergy women of the First United Methodist Church of San Diego share their musings on scripture, theology, and what it has to do with us. Welcome to this episode of Perspectives. I'm Reverend Trudy Robinson. I'm here with Reverend Brittany Hanlon, and it's good to be back together. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been here. I've been traveling, doing some vacation time. It's that time of year, everybody's been doing that. And that's kind of the springboard for our uh, next sermon series and the next three episodes of Perspectives. We are thinking about the way uh, travel takes us places and changes us. And uh, this series is entitled, The World Calls and we travel. And specifically for this first week, we're looking at the way in which God chooses and we become. Mm. And it is based around the story of Abraham, actually Abram, he wasn't Abraham yet, Abram and Sarai, as they are being called to go someplace different. So, um, Brittany, you want to read the scripture for us? I sure do. The scripture comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your home, your family, your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. Your name will be respected, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left, just at the, Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took also his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all of their possessions, and those who became members of their household in Haran, and they set out for the new land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem, at the Oak of Moriah, the Canaanites lived in the land at that time. That's a journey of faith. Ain't it? Yeah. God chooses Abram to go someplace different, and he picks up and he goes. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, uh, but from what I have discovered in my search, the distance between Haran and Judah is 600 miles. Mm, okay. Didn't have cabs. Right. <laughs> Didn't have a train or an airplane. Mm -hmm. That'll take some time to get there. Yeah. Uh, and especially, there's no GPS, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to wander and kind of, you know, go back and forth. And uh, mm -hmm. it's going to take some time. Yeah. And just imagining a journey like that, all the things that they encountered. They went through Egypt on their way to Canaan. They settled in Hebron. Um, they met Canaanites and Perizzites and who, who know Egyptians, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's so much of an experience mm -hmm. in that journey. Right. Uh, it makes me think of Moses and the journey mm -hmm. out of the wilderness mm -hmm. to the promised land. Um, they, they, the scripture does a little bit more of uh, explanation around how those years in the wilderness changed the people. Right. But I have to imagine that Abraham and Sarai were changed mm -hmm. as they took this journey yeah. as well. Um, and I think of the, the trips that I've taken in my life. Mm -hmm. Boy, uh, Indonesia, roaming around there all by myself, that, that'll change you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just being exposed to different, uh, kinds of people and ways of doing things, different foods. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same kind of experience? Oh yeah. I went to Indonesia by myself too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I thought this is beautiful, but it is so different yeah. than anything else that I have ever experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the gift of travel, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it makes me wonder, it's it's so interesting the way in which, you know, scripture it doesn't give us a lot of detail in mm -hmm. anything. Right. And part of what we do is bring our experiences to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may have noticed whenever we create a sermon series, I, I tend to try and kind of 
see uh, the lens through which we're going to read the scripture. Mm -hmm. and, and as we look at this particular story of Abram and Sarai going, um, Sarai, mm -hmm. you, you probably say it right, I don't, uh, but I have, of them being called to go somewhere else, through the lens of travel, it get, opened up a whole piece of my imagination mm -hmm. to consider what did they experience in right. that. Um, and, and maybe that's part of the journey mm -hmm. that God really wanted them to take, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Especially if they were to be a blessing to all the nations. Yeah. Right? I mean, all of the nations yeah. is what the, the text says. That's right. right. That's right. The families of the earth is my translation, right? So, yeah. Um, and what I would really like to talk about the rest of our time together and mm -hmm. in the next couple of episodes is a, a, a trip that we as a church have intentionally created mm -hmm. so that we might be changed when the trip is over. Yeah. And it is the Sankofa pilgrimage that you have led us on mm -hmm. two times already, last year and then this past July. Uh, it has been just such a gift to be able to take these trips and to have you bring your love, your passion, your education to forming these trips. We have been changed. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> I've been, I know I certainly have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, coming here, I wasn't expecting. Um, I think it's really, it's really interesting, right? Um, this text about when God tells Abram to go, mm -hmm. it's kind of how I got here to First San Diego, or you know, First United Methodist Church of San Diego. I wasn't expecting one to ever move to California, and two to move to San Diego, or three to become a Methodist minister. <laughs> and here we are, right? right? right. Um, yeah. But there was something about yeah. God saying go. Yeah. And I thought, go? Oh, what do you mean? Like, are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. And then God said, no, really, go. And so I said, all right, yeah. go. And it's been a journey, right, mm -hmm. as as any other journey. Yeah. When God says to go yeah. do something different or go to a new place and meet new people, it, it's different. Yeah. And you come, yeah, you learn a lot, but there are hills and valleys and ups and downs along the way. Um, and so the Sankofa pilgrimage was birthed out of that idea, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Reverend Trudy, and I were chatting mm -hmm. um, about my summer before I got there. I think right. I was, I guess, I guess it was like two months before I landed in San Diego. I did a pilgrimage with Trinity United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and it was about racial justice and history yeah. in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the impetus for the Sankofa pilgrimage last year was yeah. to um, to build upon that experience in Charleston. Yeah. But you had the brilliant idea of not just leaving us there, but making it more full circle so that people could understand yeah. what we were doing and why it was relevant. Right. Um, right. And so we went to, we went from Charleston to Alabama, and then from Alabama down to New Orleans. And yeah. that was a really impactful experience for me yeah. um, because it was kind of tying in these distinct places that I've been and have played a huge part in my learning. Mm -hmm. But now I was able to bridge them together and present them to a group of people so that they might have similar experiences. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're going to unpack a lot of that in, in a minute here. But um, it, it was a journey for the church, too, really. Um, to be able to, uh, it, it kind of started um, in the middle of the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Um, actually, it started for me before I got here. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in uh, Southern California and went to Colorado, and I knew that Colorado was going to be much less diverse yeah. than Southern California, and I mourned that in uh, in leaving that pot that potential mm -hmm. right for the church to be multicolored mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so when I came back to be able to see the church mm -hmm. still pretty white mm -hmm. and not really understanding the dynamic of racism mm -hmm. right um, and I don't mean that as a criticism for first church mm -hmm. that's Every church I have seen in Southern California. And I kept thinking, but it's been 20 years since I've been here. Surely progress has been made, mm -hmm. right? So that was kind of in the back of my mind as I'm reentering uh, San Diego, Southern California uh, in my journey. Mm -hmm. And then the murder of George Floyd happened. Yep. And that aligned with um, 
it, it aligned with an, a, a, a gift to the church that was undesignated and was extraordinarily generous. Mm -hmm. And that gave us some leeway to do something, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where the racial justice endowment uh, came from. Yeah. But we were committed in developing that to not want, not, uh, not have it be something only this does, but the church is involved in it mm -hmm. too. And so we began to do some readings and some book studies and learning about this. And we were, I made the commitment, the church made the commitment to be in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And I had read about the potential for pilgrimages um, and thought, oh, I want to go. I want to see those things, right? And, uh, and we just never were in a position to do much with it until you got here. You got here, and you had just been on the pilgrimage, mm -hmm. um, and you were going through, uh, you know, transitions of all kinds uh, as uh, uh, the pastor of Water's Edge. Um, and truthfully, I, I got to see how hard it was for you as a black young woman, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that just uh, fueled my understanding of how important this understanding is. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't actually remember sitting down with you. I don't remember the words or what happened, but I do know I offered that maybe you could do this. And I was kind yeah. of afraid. I do remember that kind of thinking, I don't want to put something more on our plate. Poor girl, she's just going through all of it, right? And, <laughs> and going through all the transitions and everything. And I, and I, I said, would you want to? Uh -huh. And I have to say, watching you plan that first trip, you just came alive in a way that I hadn't seen you come alive. And I thought, this is her gift. This is her ministry. So we've been blessed. So that first Sankofa trip, yeah. why, why start there? Why end there? Well, first, the when we were thinking about the pilgrimage, we were going to say, well, we're going to do a racial justice pilgrimage. But the name of it just didn't stick. Racial justice pilgrimage just, just didn't seem right. So I got to thinking um, about my experiences as a graduate of Howard University. And uh, that's where I learned about Adinkra symbols. And Adinkra symbols are West African symbols, usually from the region of Ghana. And those symbols, they represent different things as other symbols do, as symbols do, right? And so the Adinkra symbol um, that represents forward looking, but also remembering where you come from is called Sankofa. And it means it is not foolish to go back and get that which you have forgotten. Mm -hmm. And it was really powerful for me to think about that because of course, history is something that many of us know, but we don't always know the particularities of it. You know what I mean? We might have just like an overarching understanding or overview, but there's so many particularities that are important for us to know, especially as people of faith, if we're going to grow. Um, and so it is not foolish to go back and get that which you have forgotten is the real reason that the pilgrimage is named Sankofa, because I think it's important that we don't forget history if we are going to move forward in any real way. Mm -hmm. So that's the name and how Sankofa came to be. We started in Charleston because Charleston was the largest exporter and importer of enslaved people. Um, in the colonies. So we started in Charleston because if, I think I think it's 60, no, 40% of um, folks who were enslaved were in Charleston and sent out from that particular region. So we started in Charleston because it has a very, very uh, dynamic history, but also Charleston, not only um, historically, but in modernity has dealt with some racial tensions with the execution of the nine in Emanuel AME Church. Um, and to understand in 2015 how things happen, that things that happened in, you know, 1619 still affect yeah. our climate and our relationships with one another, it was really important. So we started in Charleston for that reason. And then we made our way down from Charleston over to, we stopped in Atlanta to see some historically black colleges and put into perspective what was happening during reconstruction and why historically black colleges exist today 
because they need it to exist at a particular time during Reconstruction, right? Mm -hmm. And then from there, we went down uh, to Alabama, and we went to Birmingham to go to the 16th Avenue Baptist Church, mm -hmm. um, where the four young women were killed in the bombing. And then we went from Birmingham to Montgomery, mm -hmm. and we went to the Legacy Museum to understand how lynchings play a role in our history and the... Um, the deep pain mm -hmm. that has been hidden for so long mm -hmm. surrounding those lynchings and kind of giving um, not only the people who were lynched, but also naming the counties and naming the, the our country and holding us accountable to that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we went to Mobile, Alabama, and we talked to uh, Pastor Derek about his church, First Baptist, and their role. Um, and the reason that we went to Mobile is because that's where the last slave ship docked carrying enslaved Africans the called the Col yep the Clotilda and uh, Zora Neale Hurston wrote a book called Barracoon and that's where the it was discovered that that was the last like slave ship okay. from her interviews as an, an anthropologist and then from there we went to New Orleans to go to the Angola State Prison to understand how the prison to uh, how the cradle to prison pipeline really works and who is incarcerated and why and how those dynamics work so it was a very, very powerful trip. And the point of it was to understand how history informs our today, right? right? right. And mm -hmm. I think that as Christians, it's really important that we pay attention to history. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that we understand history so that our faith may be grown in the process, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a Wesleyan girl these days, and the quadrilateral <laughs> means a lot to me, right? <laughs> Scripture, reason, tradition, and experience. Mm -hmm. And we can't deny any of those things. And I right. think that when we put them together, that's how our faith is deepened, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so- You are Methodist. Our time. Yep. <laughs> I like John. So that's what we did yeah, last yeah. year on our journey. I, I, it was such a powerful trip. Um, we know bits and pieces mm -hmm. of, of the history, right? We, we know about- uh, the system of slavery. We know about uh, the Civil War. We know about the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. um, but that trip and, and your intentionality of, of scheduling it the way it did, mm -hmm. we were able to see chronologically mm -hmm. the, the, um, the morphing of mm -hmm. racism through time yep. and to be able to see the way in which racism at its core mm -hmm was evident, it just changed costumes. Yep. From, you know, the first slave trips to uh, Reconstruction after the Civil War to the uh, Jim Crow laws and, the, and civil rights um, to, as you said, today and the uh, prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. You could not deny, <clears throat> excuse me, deny it. Mm -hmm. And it was just so evident. And that realization was convicting mm -hmm. and powerful. Mm -hmm. And everyone on that trip, we had 19 pilgrims, yeah. uh, felt it. Mm -hmm. And it was so, so good. We went to Selma. I forgot that we walked oh, yes. the, the bridge. I don't like to say the name of the bridge because yeah. it's named after a confederate. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, yeah, there was so it. much that yeah. we had done, so yeah. much. We we learned about um, Hurricane Katrina yeah, in New did. Orleans as mm -hmm. well and just how uh, black communities, uh, black and brown communities, aren't mm -hmm. given the same resources as, right. as others. So much mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. um, and we all came back changed. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it is... It is part of what God wants us to, us to do. Right. And I do think it was probably what he wanted Abram, she wanted God, mm -hmm. Abram or Sarai to do, mm -hmm. to, to learn and to grow and to humble themselves, mm -hmm. to be broader in their experiences so that they could truly then be a blessing mm -hmm. to all the families of the earth, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I love the idea that they, he, he was 75 years old. Right. Right? Right. To right? do a new thing. 75 years old doing a new thing. There is no excuse. No excuse. There isn't. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk more about this uh, ability to 
uh, travel and be changed in the next couple of, of episodes. We're going to talk more about Sankofa for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, but that's it for today. So we have some questions for you to be thinking about, and we hope you will give it some time to think. And feel free to let us know what you're thinking. We Please. love the opportunity to kind of just engage and to know you're out there. But uh, for now, here are some things for you to think about. Where is God calling you to go, but you really don't want to go? Mm -hmm. Where have you been that has changed you? And how are you learning about racism? Good questions. And I know you are working on your perspectives. We'd love to hear about them. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. This is a production of First United Methodist Church of San Diego. To learn more about our events and ministries and to access additional learning resources, visit fumcsd.org.